Okay. This is CI for CIE Final Project. Uh, my name is David Menifee. I'm recording this. Uh, I wanted to start out with um, eagles. Here's eagles. The problem with eagles is that the eagle's light limits me to 100 millimeters by 80 millimeters, which is just fine for this project. However, when you when looking for a box, uh, it was becoming a little problematic. I uh, went to DigiKey and um, Mouser and various other places, and the boxes were just too big for this thing. I found the smallest box that I could find, and it's that was even too big. So I browsed around and found another editor, uh, which has no limitation to it. Oh, and to go from Eagle's Light to the next level to get a bigger, more square area, you go from $75 for Eagle's Light to $700. That's too big of a jump. So then I found um, another editor that was totally free. Uh, it's called um, Design Spark. Where's Design Spark? But this is what happened when I imported all my hard work from Eagles into Design Spark. Now the reason why these these are all lined up is because I lined them up, but everything it was all a mess. So that I wasn't really feeling comfortable with this Design Spark, although it is a pretty good program. It's free. Doesn't cost a penny, and there's you can do 16 layers, big, huge boards if you want to play around with it. But I found another program. Um, uh, it's called um, Dip Trace. Let me see. Uh, here's the schematic of Dip Trace, and here is uh, the Dip Trace program. Look what happens when I imported the all my hard work from Eagles into Dip Trace. I didn't do this. It did it on its own. It's all perfectly. Here, let me let me go back to Eagles. Let's see. Where is Eagles? Uh, let's see. This right here. Oh, that's Design Spark. Let's see. Eagles. Wow. Oh, here's Eagles. I spent. It took me. I don't know. Two or three days to do that. To get it. And of course, not counting the times that I, the amount of time and effort I had to find these particular components. This is the USB connector. This is a right angle USB, uh, USB A. This is a two millimeter. Well, this is 3.5 millimeter, but the pin inside is a two millimeter. And a stereo jack and a power jack. Laid it all. Here's a tentative name that I gave myself. Precision Tech AVC. So then I exported that out into this um, dip trace, and I've seen several videos on the internet. Some design engineers were evaluating this, and they gave it thumbs up. Now, of course, you're, you're going to well, why not use MicroCap? Well, first of all, I had Eagles. I wanted to use Eagles. MicroCap, I haven't, tr I've got it, but I haven't tried it. But it's a very expensive program. But as far as I know, there is no free version of it so anyway there's the um, let's see how I pan in here is my project right now the board I sent it off the Gerber files they're off to the to the um, company over in Canada uh, here in the United States they wanted uh, $70 per board minimum of five boards $350 in Canada I found um, a company that will do three boards for $25 a board. I don't know what kind of product they produce. I don't know what kind of a end product will result in that, but uh, I'm giving Canada a shot. Then if, if not there, I'll go to Malaysia or some other place. But definitely not in, the, not in this country. You can't put something like this together. <laughs> now, if I buy in bulk, yeah. I can get this down to $20 a board if I buy 100 boards. So that's not all that bad. And here's the uh, schematic editor really nice for this is again dip trace dip trace the other thing about it this is dip trace well not even dip trace light this is the free version of dip trace and um, you can use it as long as you don't profit off it 
if I buy Dip Trace Light, seventy five dollars the same as Eagles, but then I can go from there to one hundred and fifty to three hundred to four fifty. So there are more incremental steps in terms of the licensing agreements. They limit you in this case, in this particular case, to uh, three hundred pins. This is a total of one hundred and seventy eight pins. So you can go here, schematic information, uh, one hundred and sixty nine pins on that. Let's see, where's it? let's see Eagles. I uh, go here, and if I go, well, anyway, this is, uh, let me look for, let me look real quick for eagles. Uh, this is dip trays. Oh, here's eagles. I come here. Um, cam processor. Well, anyway, uh, one other thing about all this. In order to check out the circuit, it's an automatic volume control, so it it sort of smooths over the um, audio levels, and the, you, you can find there's a, these are there are dozens of these little audio sweep generators. Here's one. This one happens to be a free version, so I set the audio output level out, and or I can volume the output level up and down, and it, the um, output of the device doesn't change and I'll show that later. I, I'm, I'm thinking about getting a decimal meter to really show that. But I'm also, I've created an Excel file and when I'm, my boards come back from Canada in a couple days I will go through this. I'll take a lot of data with that. Um, where I'm looking for let's look at this one right here. Documented properties. That anyhow, this right here, uh, Design Spark. Even though it's totally free, it's just that I'm not. I don't feel confident with that. Um, also, I've got this. My DC to DC um, converter. That doesn't really tell you in the dot data sheet exactly what kind it is but there's two different types and under the two types isolated and non-isolated there are these subtypes uh, under the non-isolated there's a buck regulator there's a boost regulator there's about 15 different types in total but these are the major types under the isolated which are more expensive but they're I mean are more expensive and uh, more complicated they use transformers Isolated flyback. There's three different types here: the flyback, the forward isolated uh, voltage switch regulator, and a push pull. So I found a neat little document. I put this whole thing together. Okay, well, this is for my CIE project. This is for the guys at CIE. This is an update video letting you know what I've been up to. My camera. Or of course, you know about my iPhone 4S, the autofocus, <coughs> excuse me, the autofocus is not working quite right. Um, I didn't get the iPhone 4S for that, but after a year of having it, I decided to use it. Now, I've, the reason why it doesn't work, well, it could be anything. For, they, they tell me, well, one of the things it might be is that your, your lens is dirty. Well, no, the lens are clean. The lens is clean. They gave me several suggestions. It's still not working. But you have to tap on the screen, as you've seen in my first video. If you don't, you tap on the screen and it'll autofocus. But I, it's not supposed to work like that. It's supposed to work automatically. But here is my final. This is what I sent out. And by the way, here's what it looks like with the copper pores. This is the top of the board. This is the bottom of the board. Here, go back to the top of the board. And I'll just zoom around a little bit. And... This is a name that I gave myself tentatively. I also thought of micro precision tech or micro scission or whatever. Uh, AVC. Right now I'm dealing with these guys in Canada. They seem to know what they're doing. And this is the Gerber file. This is generated the Gerber files. And here's the bottom of the here's the bottom trays. Okay, well. Uh, there are more videos to come. I just got my camera back. It's been out. Uh, people were using it. 
and so I'm gonna some more videos will be coming only I'll use a different technique but thanks for watching